Social media. The amount of money that we're spending online in terms of online advertising is going to go up, but not in the traditional place like Google, Google AdWords. Google AdWords are expensive. They've now become increasingly expensive to such a point that people can't get a return on investment from using them. Uh, in some categories, unless you've got a gross profit margin of greater than 75%, you're not going to make enough money on Google AdWords because they're so expensive. It doesn't mean that they are now irrelevant. Some people are still doing really well off Google Ads and, and returning on a good, uh, making a good, a, a good living off those. But it just depends on the, G, the gross profit margin within your business and your product category. Better returns on investment are to be found from Facebook and new kid on the block, Pinterest. And I just want to share this. Now, the big now, I could just feel the vibe going through the room there at that moment. Facebook. <gasps> This is all, we're a bunch of serious business people. What's Facebook got to do with this? My biggest single takeaway from the San Diego conference that with all the marketeers in the room, whether they're marketing to consumers or other businesses, the tool, the platform where they're getting the biggest traction is Facebook. 1.2 billion users. The population of Facebook is bigger than the population of every, any single country in the world. There is, in the UK alone, uh, the average UK, uh, a third of the, uh, sorry, in the UK, one third of the UK adult population go onto Facebook every single day. On average, they're on Facebook for 25 minutes in the course of a day, and they have 200 friends. So whether or not you like or loathe Facebook, there's people in your business that will be spending time on that platform, and there's people in your business that will be influenced by what they see on that platform. It's where they hang out. Remember I said to you earlier on, people wear, go online to where your customers or your prospective customers are hanging out. We talked about eBay and Amazon, and obviously Google and other platforms, but also people are hanging out on Facebook. So Facebook ads are cheaper than Google ads. Well, Facebook video ads are even cheaper than Facebook ads. They're relatively new. They're a growing business. Facebook made a billion dollars in revenue from Facebook video ads alone last year. And so they're a massively massive growth area. But video is really, really effective. because So video plays automatically in the news feed. Here's an image of a, a restaurant. They're doing a recipe demonstration, a cooking de demonstration. And at the end of that recipe demonstration, they've got an offer to go and visit and, and have a, and dine at their restaurant. So you could share, you could do a video ad about sharing your insights on the market space or giving some top tips about what somebody could do that would solve a problem that you know that your customer base is grappling with. You could put that out as an ad, giving content for free, and then directing them to your website where you can capture their name and email address. Anybody here heard of Google's retargeting? Okay, a few of you. That's it. If you've gone and looked on a website and of a product or a service and you've not bought from that company, then the advert for that company's website follows you around the net for a while, yeah? Now, some people find that incredibly annoying, but it's actually incredibly effective. It's called remarketing or retargeting. And it helps, the reason why it's effective is that um, seven to 21 touches I was talking about earlier on. You can do the same thing now on Facebook. You can retarget people so that if they've raised a hand of interest before, when they're next on Facebook, your advert can get in front of them. Or recently I've noticed what you can do, if you've been onto their website, um, then the next time you're on Facebook, their advert appears in front of you on Facebook. You might not have been onto their Facebook page, but it appears in front of you. But it's good. It keeps your, your, your brand in front of your customers, where they're choosing to spend time, where they're choosing to hang out. So it can be a very, very effective tool. This friend and, uh, and peer that I keep referring to did a Facebook video test last month. So he started off with he spent £800 worth of uh, budget on Facebook advertising last month. He took people, he offered them two or three modules free of his uh, online kind of training, helping people to elevate, it's targeted at business owners, at managing directors, helping them to elevate their performance online and their rankings of their website online. He then said, if you would fill this questionnaire in, I'll give you two free eBooks that will give you even more in-depth strategies that will help you. So Proportion downloaded the two free eBooks, Lead Magnet, yeah, so he did a video and then he did a further Lead Magnet. I asked them questions like size of your business, what are your challenges that you're facing, what are your growth aspirations, what are some of the challenges you've, uh, so what are some of the things you've tried already. He then had a telesales person that followed up and off the back of that £800 spend in the month he converted, upsold £80,000 worth of booked business. These strategies work. 
Yeah. So they can be very, very powerful. And remember, they're not just powerful business to consumer, they're powerful business to business. Pinterest, growing platform, massively growing. And let me explain it a little bit more. Third largest uh, social media platform. Who here is, uses it, used it, spent any time on Pinterest? Yeah, probably about 10% of the room. And, and, and that's typical also. There's a lot of myths around Pinterest. Um, it's only for women and it's for fashion and, and, and crafts and that kind of thing. And that's not true. Granted, there are higher in demographics. There's a greater proportion of women than there are on men, but that's changing that balance at the moment. Pinterest, for those of you maybe involved in planning a party or a wedding, um, you'll possibly have used Pinterest where you go and say, oh, that colour scheme looks amazing, that cake, oh, that dress, wow, that car. And you tag or you'll pin those images and pull them all into one place onto a board. It's, it's like a future search engine. It's, it, you're, people are going on there in a buying frame of mind saying, I'd like that, I like that, I'd like to buy that in the future. So they're indicating to you the kind of things that they would like to buy in the future. So that's what I mean about a future search engine. It enables you to search through what they're thinking about buying in the future. So we had a lady that came to the Manchester event who her business, relatively new startup, so is in the uh, maternity wear clothing and clothing for newborns and toddlers. She wasn't a major player in the industry, in the marketplace. But what she discovered was that most of the traffic to her website was coming from Pinterest. This is other mums that had bought her products, her business's clothing, and said, oh, I love this item of clothing for my little one or for me. And they've, they've taken a photograph of it or have taken a screen grab of the image of it from the website and they've pinned it onto Pinterest. She didn't even have her own presence on, on Pinterest. But it was the biggest generator of leads and sales to her business than any other lead generation tool out there. So I accept it's not for everybody. Not everybody's got a product that lends itself. But I'll give you an example. I just put two search terms in, garden and design. I've got this kind of sea of images. This one, kind of like top right hand corner here, is 23 small backyard ideas, how to make it look cozy and spacious. Remember I talked about lists earlier on? 23 small backyard ideas. Somebody would click on that image on Pinterest and they'd go through to their website to read the blog post, 23 small backyard ideas, at which stage um, you probably offer them 10 ideas and then say for our full report with full color photographs and design ideas, um, just leave your name and email address and you can have the rest of the 23. You've got your lead magnet of those 23 small backyard ideas. You've got the ability to form a relationship. Here's the relevant point. If you're out there searching for ideas to renovate your garden, to landscape your garden, you're going to go, some people will go and have a look on Pinterest for other people's ideas. If you're a landscape gardening business, you could get your business and your ideas and your service in front of prospective buyers who would not have stumbled across your website, or highly likely that they would not have stumbled across your website. So again, it could be a very good lead generation strategy. Not for everybody, but for those people that have got a product or a service that lends itself to really good photography, um, then, then it can be very effective. And it's not just around garden design. You know, here's an example of a growing uh, sort of niche on Pinterest, particularly in the US, um, the survivalist group. So these are the people that are a bit Bear grills like that want to be dropped into the forest of a weekend with a knife in the mouth and they'll survive on their own through just the knife for the weekend. Well, this kind of like survivalist community, um, it's a massive growing area of interest on Pinterest. All the little, little different gadgets and tools and things that they can do to survive in the wild over the course of the weekend. One of the challenges, though, how do you get your image to stand out in a sea of images? So a couple of things you can do. First of all, you can make your image longer, so you use more screen real estate. So there's the dimensions there in terms of pixels to make it a double length image. Also, Pinterest wants you to use the text box across the bottom but what will make it stand out more is if you amend the image and you put a semi-translucent box across the middle of it and the text in the middle that way that image will stand out in terms of that sea of images and the third thing is if you were to put a border around it again it'll make that image jump out draw people's eye in all good marketers test and measure test and measure so you want to just test it I just did red there as a colour because it just colour toned with the Pinterest logo. You could try green or gold or purple or whatever it was, just see which is going to work to make it stand out more on terms of the market on that page, the Pinterest page. Google. 
mobile optimization. 22nd, 23rd of this year, mobile chain, sorry, Google changed the search engine algorithm that any search done from a mobile device, tablet or a smartphone, if your website doesn't show up, doesn't render properly on a mobile device, it just gets dropped off the bottom of the search engine rankings. So given that more than 51% of all online searches are done from mobile devices, if you want your website to show up on Google searches done from mobile devices, you need to make sure that your website is optimized to show up on, on for tablets and to show up on mobile. So in your books, exercise three, what you've got is a table there. On the left-hand side, I'd just like you to list down your core products or services. And I want you to have a look across these different areas of creating good quality content, Facebook and um, uh, advertising and retargeting, building marketing funnels, using video, and uh, mobile optimization. I just want you to tick which is most appropriate. The eagle-eyed ones amongst you will see that there's a column missing out of the book, unfortunately. But I just want you to start, A, thinking yourself, and then discussing on your table, what else are you going to start adopting or implementing in your online marketing mix? Which of these strategies that are getting traction right now are you going to put into play in your business? Okay, off you go, and we'll hear from you in a minute or two.